Hello everyone, this is Lucy Zero Five, and welcome to the Global Mindset Tutorial Review. And today, so we'll be looking at the 2005 release by Palisades of the Army of Darkness action figures review. And today's action figure review, we're looking at the Knight and the Deadite Pike Man. Now, I got this straight from a local toy shop near my area, and they originally priced it for 40 ringgit as indicated in this price tag here but they actually have an offer so it dropped down to 28 ringgit that's equivalent to around eight maybe nine dollars there now let's take a look at the front portion of the packaging now the background is quite interesting one portion of the background itself is in yellow background and you will notice that there's a image a smaller image taken from the Army of Darkness movie poster only showing the character Ash portrayed by Bruce Campbell actor which is kinda nice but I really wish that you can actually see well more than that besides the head now let's take a look at the plastic bubble there one side here we have the figure the knight on the other side we have the dead eye pike man in the middle is the rest of the accessories. We have two of the base stands there, two of the shields, a dagger, an axe, a pike at the back, and a sword at the bottom. Now, let's take a look at the back portion of the packaging. Here we have the actual image of the two figures, but strangely, they are not equipping any accessories at all. Here at the corner, we have an actual image taken from the movie Army of Darkness. The dead eye pint man there at the bottom is all displayed out of all the figures for the Palisades Army of Darkness series though what's frustrating to see is that you do not know which figure is pairing which with well which figure you have the dead eye pint man and the knight here but you don't know whether or not if they are in the same well series Although there are also other figures as well displayed down, there's the Dead Eye Centurion, the Dead Eye itself, the Dead Eye Foot Soldier, Hero Ash, the Dead Eye Scout, and the Pit Witch. There's also more figures in the later series as well. Now, without further ado, let's open up this packaging so we can molest the figures. Be right back. And we're back after doing your figure and the rest of stuff out from packaging. Now, let's take a look at the Knight figure first before we go to the Dead Eye Pike Man. Now let's take a look at the Knight's accessories. Now it does come with a small little base stand here made of a beige plastic material color as you can see and it is painted on the top to make it look very dirty with a bit of well, dark grey paint job. But the paint job is not really well done. As you can see this portion here looks a little bit too clean and at the bottom it's really filthy to show how they do their quality control stuff but it's pretty filthy on the bottom top section of the baseline is quite nicely done with the mold as you can see there's a lot of cracks there here and we have a tiny little peg for the figure to stand on now let's take a look at the weapons now it doesn't matter which figure holds which weapons you can actually interchange the weapons to well, whichever figure that you prefer the figure to be holding on to so let's take a look at some of the portion of the weapons first here we have a pike very nicely done made of a brown dark brown plastic material color quite a long piece here barely able to hold it properly very very nice now the middle portion here is painted in gold but the colors is a little bit faded off and for the, well, the blade itself, the entire top piece here is painted in silver, very nice. The mold of the entire pipe is quite nicely done, but it's a little bit bent, as you can see there. Hmm. Presumably being in trapped inside the packaging for far too long. And it's rather flimsy, so you have to be extra careful. The mold of the pipe itself is rather nicely done and pointy very nice 
Now we have here, there's a sword made of a black plastic material color and the blade is painted in silver. Now I really don't I don't like the design of the sword itself because there's not a lot of details for the sword. The handle, there's no straps. Bottom piece here, there's no decorative ornament or whatsoever. I've seen better, well, better accessory coming from a G.I. Joe figure than, well, for this one. This one is a little bit bland. Let's take a look at his shield. Now the shield here is made of a dull white plastic material color as you can see. Back portion here is a handle. Well, at least the figure can hold it up until this point. And here is where they, well, most of the paint job apply onto the shield. Very nicely done. Each corner of the shield itself, even at the bottom, is painted in gold. The middle portion of the emblem has been painted in gold as well. So that's the cross. That is painted in black. Very nicely done. I really like the paint job there. Now, I'm not too sure why, but they could have easily put in the straps, just like, well, medieval style shields, but well, the handle still works pre pretty well because the figure can hold it pretty well as well. Now, let's take a look at the figure's paint job. As you can see here, majority of parts that the figure is made of is a light gray, a little bit bluish plastic material color but you can see that majority of the parts here is actually painted very nicely done and it looks rather dirty and rather wetted for the armor parts especially armor parts are all painted nicely done and it looks very weathered down the belt straps has been painted in brown paint job the buckles has been painted in silver more towards to quite lightly colored silver very nice back portion of the legs itself the straps has been painted in brown some of the rivers are painted some of them are not it's actually wearing dark blue pan which is actually painted very well there's some portion of paint smudge as you can see there, not really well done there, so, as well as this portion as well. Wearing his shoes at the bottom, and the shoes, which is painted in dark brown. But again, there's a lot of paint smudge at the back here. The hand is actually made of a flesh, flesh tone plastic material color, but they actually painted it. And there's a bit of, as you can see, a bit of shading of the skin tone color there. Very nicely done. Again, a lot of straps has been painted. This one, the rivets have been painted individually. Silver paint job on the rivets, very nice. So that's on this side as well. Armor parts are quite dirty looking. Well painted. Very nice. Now the neck section, the armor, the chain mail armor, that covers the next section is also well painted flesh tone skin is also painted underneath there but the eyes itself the eye socket there is supposed to be all blank but as you can see there one portion there is missed out so it looks kind of weird you get the bit of flesh tone skin there and then the rest is glossy black it looks really weird but the paint job on most part it looks very nicely done as expected for such a type of figure coming from Pallet Pallet Daisy, Daisy very nice now let's take a look at the figures mold now the figures mold is basically well follow the same well design as the army of darkness those knights that are wearing those armor so it's quite well detailed stuff as you can see on this figure the armor parts are well nicely done as you can see the upper bicep there the elbow there so does the wrist all the armor parts are well done the body itself is also quite well done with the mold a lot of straps skirt is as well the skirt is made of a softer plastic material as you can see, you can actually bend it with no problem. Very nice. 
front portion of the leg armor is also well done as well. So that's the bottom section of the feet armor. Back portion is all exposed. Very nice. Exposed with the pants being exposed, a lot of wrinkles there, a lot of straps to hold the armor together. Very well done. The head itself is also quite nicely done with the chain mail attached to the head itself. You get to see the bottom section of the mouth itself, but I really wish they actually molded the eyes there because it's just flat out in the eye socket. So it looks really weird, especially on the paint job that is not fully covered with the black paint job at all. Got a nice helmet there. Very nice. Some rivets as well. Very nicely done. Overlapping armor parts, straps, buckles. For a small size figure, and this is a three and a quarter inch figure, it's quite well detailed. I'm quite impressed. One side of the hand here is a holding hand. The other side is also a holding hand, but loosely holding, as you can see. One finger is slightly pointing. It's a pity that the figure is not given with a crossbow because the left hand is quite suitable to hold a crossbow. Very nice. Let's take a look at the figure's articulation. Now on the neck joint here, as you can see, it's on a ball joint, so you can pivot up, straight, or turn to a straight raise, side to side as well. Now shoulder joints here can turn to a straight raise, and lift the shoulders this high, upper bicep also as an articulated bicep, so it can swivel 360 degrees. Now, what's interesting is that it sort of has this double, jo double jointed elbow, so it can actually bend the first joint up this far, and the second joint at the bottom bend this far. Not too sure why they do that, it looks kind of silly, but it's quite nice in some way because you want the hand to bend in a certain angle so the figure can hold the shield close to him or high enough to cover him so there's a good and a bad thing there because the joint is below the second joint is just below the elbow joint so it looks rather weird when it bends the hand something like this now it doesn't have the torso joint but it does have a waist joint as you can see but you cannot turn the waist joint 360 degrees you can only turn left and right because well being handled by the armor part itself now the hip joints here can move forward back and then it's on a hinge it's something like a DC Universe classics figure so the joints is similar that way for the hip joints you can also split the legs this far as you can see this is how the joint works then we have the thigh swivel joint that turns 360 degrees again similar to a DC Universe Classics articulation for the legs knee joint here is only a single digit joint but you can bend only this far it's actually double jointed that you can actually bend this far but for this leg itself it has some problems bend, bending the joint all the way then we have the ankle joint that doesn't swivel anywhere but it can it's on a hinge joint that can pivot down this far very nice now let's fully equip the figure with the accessories first let's have him hold the shield itself and as you can see it doesn't hold the shield very well it tends to loosen up and well pop off from his hand quite easily this is how he holds the shield very nice let's pop the base stand onto him very nice As you can see, the peg is not long enough to support him. But there you go. There's the Army of Darkness Knight there. The figure is actually not bad looking. Despite the weird articulation on the, well, 
just below the elbow itself. The details is quite nicely done despite the pain, the little bit more pain smudge found on the back of the legs itself. But it's quite nicely done. I really like the details for this figure and amount of, I would say, a lot of articulation for such a small little figure there. So if I'm gonna give a rating on this, I'm saying it's actually not bad. I actually like the Army of Darkness figure here, the knight figure here. Very nice, detailed, quite well articulated. I'll give it a nice 8 out of 10. Yes, 8 out of 10 for the knight. Next up, let's take a look at the Deadite Pike Man. Be right back. And we're back, and this time we'll take a look at the Deadite Pike Man. First things first, let's take a look at the accessories. Now, he does also come with a base stand, the same base stand as the knight. So basically it's not much of a change except for this base stand at the bottom section here. It is utterly filthy with the paint job as you can see there. There's the pig there for the figure to stand on. Let's take a look at his other accessories. First he comes with a small little dagger here. Very nicely done. Made of a black plastic material color. But now this dagger has more paint job and more details compared to the long sword itself. The blade is painted in silver, the hilt is painted in gold, and the bottom section of the handle is also painted in gold. The details is quite nicely done as you can see. There's a bit of detail at the hilt there. The handle looks like there's multitudes of straps there, very nice. And the bottom section of the dagger there's a bit of detail as well. Far more nicer than the long sword. Put this on one side. Then we have his rusted axe. Now this is a undead weapon. Very nice. Got axe here with very little amount of paint job. The entire thing is made of a black plastic metal color, of course, but painted with well, rusted. A little bit of last rusted bronze there. Very nice. And as you can see, the axe itself is a bit bent but I'm still alright with that got a nice little uh, detail there the straps, the bottom section of the handle itself made of wood because there's a lot of lining there, very nice rusted axe, suit, very suitable for an undead warrior next we'll take a look at it the shield. The shield is actually painted entirely. Very nice. But it's actually made of a silver plastic material color. The front portion is actually painted entirely and it looks like it's quite worn out. Very very nice. You got a very nice mold for the shield itself. A lot of rivets on the sides surrounding the lion logo. You got a nice uh, lion logo in the middle as well very detailed stuff again like the other shoe you've got the handle here for the figure to hold on to really detailed stuff very nice now let's take a look at the dead eyes paint job now as you can see majority of the parts you see on the dead eye is not painted at all they are mostly plastic material color some of the parts are actually painted but most of the parts are not but first things first, for the skeletal part, there are some parts that are actually painted like this section of the arms itself. You can see this, the shading there, very nice. So that's on this other side of the arm there. There's a little bit of shading, but you're hardly able to tell it. But the face, the legs itself, no paint job at all. However, for the armor part, for the arm itself, they actually painted the armor parts. A little bit of dark gray, dark black. A bit of really dirty colored beige colors. Also bronze colors, which is a little bit back black bronze. Very nicely done. With the armor part, as you can see on his morning and, well, his good here it's not painted at all just pure black plastic material color so that's the armor pad here and so does the chain mail that's covering his head it's not painted at all just purely black plastic material color now let's take a look at the dead dice art 
well, the mold itself. Now, previously on the, well, the previous series for the Army of Darkness figures, they do have a Deadite skeleton with no armor at all. So basically, they just take the same skeleton again, strap him with the armor parts, and there you have it. Because underneath the armor parts itself, you get to see the skeletal parts there, including underneath the skirt as well. And also the for the head itself, the entire chainmail that covers the head is also a separate piece. But the mold is really delicious. I really love the mold, that, especially on the whole skeletal body here. What I really don't like is that they actually molded the feet or the ankle in a certain way that for the figure to stand by his own is quite a chore. You have to bend the figure quite low for him to for him to stand properly without tipping over or falling backwards. As you can see this ankle here, and that's not a really nice touch. But I really love the details of the mold for the skeleton there. Very nice. And by the looks of it, it looks rather fragile because it's extremely thin, as you can see there. Very nice. Even the arms itself, very nicely done with the skeletal parts there. Having parts of the flesh still stick onto the body. You got the armor part here, which is all worn out. Very nice got the chainmail that covers the head itself even the head sculpt is also quite well done some portion of the tooth is missing as well very nice eye sockets and no sockets chainmail that grabs around the head is also well done the breastplate is also cut quite nicely done with the details found on the breastplate itself as you can see there very nice even the back portion is all bare and the bottom section of the skirt itself very nice it's all tattered with holes nicely done I really like the mold for the skeleton itself and the armor parts very nice now let's take a look at the figure's articulation now this figure do have some articulation but some of them are quite limited the head actually can turn to 60 degrees pivot down like so or up or side to side, torso joint here can pivot down, straight, side to side, or turn 360 degrees. It's on the ball joint there. Now, for the elbow joint, it has two ball joints one's connecting on the torso itself, the other one connecting onto the shoulder. So you can actually move the shoulder in and out, up and down, or the entire shoulder 360 degrees very nicely done or lift the shoulders this high there is no elbow joint or wrist joint because due to the frailness of the well of the figure itself it's quite limited space for them to put any joints there now the hip joints can actually move forward because it's on a ball joint similar joint as the shoulders itself so you can move forward this far or spread the legs a little bit far like so or back once I lift the skirt up back this far now what's interesting to note is that the figure also comes with double jointed knee but you have to be extra careful when bending them because it's rather frail you can bend the knees all the way to the back but again as I stress out, this is a three and a quarter inch skeleton. So you have to handle them with extra care. This one I cannot even bend at all for the bottom section of the joint. Very nice, the articulation. Now let's equip the figure with, well, with the accessories first. Let's put the shield into his hand, like so. We hunt the elbow articulation, it's quite limited to pose the figure. 
there you have it, very nice have the figure stand onto the base stand itself very nice oh. as I said before the pegs is not long enough to pluck in at the bottom section of the feet again it wants to fall very nice so overall the skeleton itself is quite detailed stuff and surprisingly it does have well double jointed knees there which is something you don't actually see every day for a three and a quarter inch figure and the accessories wise you can still hold them it's just that you have well some problems trying to pose the figure with some limited articulation now what i really don't like about the skeleton is the ankle the lacking of the ankle joint because due to the mold of the ankle itself you cannot have the figure stand straight at all so you have to rely on the figure uh, base stand there for him to stand at all but still a very nice figure if i'm gonna give a rating on this i say i'll give it a nice 7 out of 10 yes 7 out of 10 for the deadite pike man and i thank you all for watching this is lucy05 and i'm signing off